Good morning, and welcome to Bangkok on a bit of a dreary day, and welcome to this trip report about a little-known airline on a little-flown route. This is the third of three flights that got me to Phu Quoc from New York. The first two legs were on Qatar Airways. Today, though, we're flying the not-so-luxurious Thai Vietjet, emphasis on the Thai, since it is, in fact, a different airline with a different operating certificate. Today, we're going to take a look at the massive Sawanapum Airport, check out the Air France KLM Lounge, talk a little, just a little bit, about Thai Vietjet's short history, and of course, we will tour the cabin and have a bit of breakfast on the way. But first, we gotta get to the airport. There are quite a few low-cost airlines that are based in Bangkok, and loads of them that fly here, but the majority of local low-cost carriers use the older Don Mung Airport to the north of the city. What I've always enjoyed about Vietjet, and now also Thai Vietjet, is that they always have used Suwanapool, which is the much more comfortable and modern facility. Let's head inside the massive check-in hall now. For those of you that are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. My name is Kevin, and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I think the internet needs a whole lot more honesty when it comes to airline and hotel content, and that's why I'm here. I'm here just to be real with you. I make trip reports and high-end hotel reviews, and I always self-fund my trips. In fact, you'll always be able to find the exact price that I paid in the description below. I don't alert any companies that I'll be filming because I want as normal of an experience as possible. So in this video today, I'm gonna to give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, and unbiased opinion based on my experience. Opened in 2006, we are now in the 11th largest airport terminal on earth. Make sure you get dropped off at the correct door, otherwise it's quite a schlep to the other side. In 2022, Bangkok Swanapum had 28.8 million passengers. That's less than half of its peak in 2019 at over 65 million. The 12 months through September of 2023 saw over 45 million passengers though. So things are continuing to improve. And with the recent soft opening of the new satellite terminal, surely the numbers will be back at their peaks in the next couple of years. I went to check in for my flight and to my surprise, they told me my ticket was canceled. The check-in agent didn't know anything more about it and sent me to the customer service desk. Let me sum up the next 20 minutes in a sentence or two. Vietjet doesn't differentiate websites for the two airlines. I booked my ticket while in Vietnam in Vietnam Dong. No problem. A couple of weeks before travel, I went in to manage my booking and added baggage allowance, something that I've done many times on Vietjet. But today is my first time on Thai Vietjet. I paid for my new baggage allowance in Vietnam Dong, the system's default. I had confirmation, very easy. The holdup today was over seven baht. That's around 22 American pennies. Those seven baht more are what I would have been charged had I paid for the baggage in Thai baht, which was not a choice available to me to begin with. Got it? Security was light this morning and very soon we were through to the airside shopping mall. So in Southeast Asia, we have a few low-cost airline titans which have dominated some markets by creating local subsidiaries. You've got AirAsia, based in Malaysia, which also has airlines in Thailand, the Philippines, and Indonesia. There's Indonesian Lion Air, which also has a branch in Thailand. There's even Australia's Jetstar, who have separate airlines operating in Singapore and Japan. Well, Vietjet saw this and they want it in. Thai Vietjet had their first flight in 2015 between Bangkok and Phuket, and they currently have 18 aircraft all on lease from Vietjet. Looking at daily departures from Bangkok's two airports, Thai Vietjet is the third largest with around 60 flights per day at the moment, behind Thai Airways and Thai Air Asia. One very interesting thing about the Thai Vietjet fleet is that it's been announced that by 2024, their entire fleet will be Boeing. Quite the magic trick to pull off since at the moment, it's entirely Airbus. While this plan may be delayed a bit, that is in fact the plan. Parent company Vietjet has 354 aircraft on order, and 50 of them, 50 737 MAXs to be specific, are destined to Thai Vietjet, replacing the A320s one for one until all Boeing, and then growing the fleet from there. Since there are so many lounges here at BKK, I'm just trying to give you a peek inside all of them over the course of my reviews. Today we're going to the Air France KLM Lounge, which is actually my favorite for one specific reason. It's one of the few lounges at Suwanapum with apron views. To me, a lounge just really isn't a lounge if you can't see airplanes. 
I could just be in my office. The food on offer is usually decent as well, as far as Bangkok lounge food goes. Note that I access the lounge with my Priority Pass. Priority Pass has a ridiculous 22 different lounges available in this airport. As we head to the gate and get our first look at our bird for today, let me just tell you one clever thing that I enjoy about these two airlines from a consumer perspective. When flying between Vietnam and Thailand, there are quite a few choices. Part of the reason why low-cost carriers are low-cost is because their crew usually come home every night. For an airline like Vietjet, in the past that meant that they'd have their first flight of the day to Bangkok around 7am, and the first leaving Bangkok around 9am. But with both airlines operating some of the routes now, for example between Bangkok and Saigon, you get those early and late departures in both directions. Currently, the Thai Vietjet route map is mostly focused on domestic operations, but with the added aircraft on the way, they'll be able to significantly expand their international presence beyond the current 10 or so destinations. Here's your friendly reminder to click that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, all free for you, to help the channel grow. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. As we make our way on board, let's take a look at today's flight stats. Stepping on board, there's really no surprise here. It is a bog standard via jet configuration. The only thing slightly different between the two airlines that I can see are the uniforms. The Thai version have some staff sporting these awkward lipstick red double-breasted blazers. For today's short hop, I was in my trusty row 14, an exit row and the better of the two exit rows since row 12 doesn't recline. Viajet charges an extra fee for these seats along with the first five rows. One thing to note though, only row one and the exit rows have extra space. The extra money that you'd be paying to sit in row two through five is simply to be up front. As with most carriers in the region, the exit rows will be policed, so to speak. Crew will ensure that passengers from cheaper or free seats don't accidentally reposition themselves. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next five videos to come out, as well as other bits and pieces like the soundtrack titles featured in this video. On your way down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full-length videos every Thursday and Saturday. All right, let's push back, have a quick taxi and get going. The spool up, takeoff, and airport stats are coming up next.
I wasn't sure what would be available on board, so I pre-ordered my meal when booking my ticket. As I wait for that to come around, let's take a look at perhaps the most awkwardly drawn map that I've ever seen. I am not going to talk specifics, some of you will understand why, but for a Vietnamese parent company airline, the placement of China is really, really, really strange, and was surely never seen by headquarters in Hanoi. This is a pretty short flight today, with Phu Quoc being the most western currently operating airport in Vietnam, so I was served around 15 minutes after takeoff. I say the most western most currently operating airport because there is another one that's just about to open in the way far north of Vietnam that's a little bit west of here. I had a Thai green curry and it was actually pretty good. In fact, it was a lot better than I was expecting since I think Big Viet Jet's food is kinda horrible. I do really hate disposable wooden utensils, but at least these were the more polished, smoother variety. Soon enough, we began our descent into Phu Quoc, crossing the island in the north before turning and landing from the east. And that is that. Easy peasy stuff. By the way, can I be the first to welcome you back to where this channel began less than three years ago? Overall, I'd say it was a perfectly pleasant low-cost flight with better than expected food. They need to work out the kinks related to currency conversion and ticketing, but besides that, there's really nothing to complain about. Crew were friendly, plane was clean, flight was on time. Not much more to ask for. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on any of my twice weekly videos. I post full length reviews every Thursday and Saturday. I'll see you next time for my current India series finale from the incredible Oberoi Amarvillas. Oh, and thanks for watching until the end.